Hi everyone, it's Carly Reese and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little different than normal. Today's going to have a little bit more of a serious tone to it, but I'm trying my best not to make it that way. I just kind of wanted to sit down today and be able to talk about my story, especially because so many of you have been following along on my journey so now that I finally have the answers I feel like it's only fair to share them with you guys as well and so many of you guys have been so helpful and so supportive and a lot of your guys' comments not only on my videos but especially my mom's videos because that's where I mostly talked about like my health issues your comments were just extremely helpful not only in like helping me find out what's wrong with me but also it just made me feel like I'm not alone you know so basically what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be going through my story of the past few years and what I've been dealing with. Yesterday, I officially found out what is wrong with me, so this news is like very fresh to me. And when I get into talking about like my actual diagnosis, I wanna let you guys know, I'm not a doctor and because this is such fresh news to me, I don't really have the best knowledge about it, but I'll tell it to you guys as best as I know. But shall we get into my story? It's very hard for me to specify like a specific timestamp because I've just been dealing with this for quite a bit now. And once you get used to things, it's kind of hard to remember like what life was like before that. But my guess is that this has been going on for about three years or maybe more than that. Like I said, I've been dealing with this for a long time, so it's extremely normalized to me. So thinking back to like three years ago and how I felt, like it honestly doesn't even exist in my brain. But I'm going to try to tell you guys the best that I can about it. So this problem started and was mostly always geared towards stomach aches. And for a long time, I feel like that was really the only symptom that I had is I just constantly had stomach aches, whether that was like right after eating or hours after eating, I just constantly had these terrible stomach aches. Around this time when I was having these stomach aches, I was kind of able to pinpoint like what foods made me feel worse than others. And at the time that was dairy. So that's when I realized that I was lactose intolerant. So around that time period, I kind of always correlated my stomach aches with just being lactose intolerant. And for the longest time, that's all I thought it was. Until things started just progressively getting worse and worse over time. I hadn't made the decision to go to the doctor until recently and that was because I experienced TMI, rectal bleeding. Feels awkward to talk about but we're all human so I really don't care. But after that happened, I had finally made the decision to go to the doctor because that is a very concerning thing, you know, and it's not something you want to ignore. I am 18 years old but I still see a pediatrician because why not? And not to hate on my pediatrician but she's terrible. So I ended up actually seeing a different pediatrician in the same practice at the same place and he was actually so helpful. I felt like for the first time I had finally like gotten some answers about how I'm feeling and what it might possibly be. It's so hard telling this story without like using his name so we're gonna give him a fake name. His name is Chad. So Dr. Chad immediately took me seriously. I had told him about a lot of the symptoms that I was having and when I was telling him certain things he was like very openly saying I am concerned and another thing he had mentioned is that I had recently been losing weight and that I currently weigh the same weight that I weigh when I was 15. I had also forgot to mention that before going to see Dr. Chad I had found out that I have a gluten intolerance as well. So not only am I lactose intolerant, I have a gluten intolerance as well. So basically, Dr. Chad did a few things for me. He had me get my blood drawn and he had me do a poop sample test. And in those things, he was basically looking for celiac disease and Crohn's disease. So at that appointment, Dr. Chad advised me to go see a GI doctor regardless of what my results were for either of those diseases for two different reasons. One, if I tested positive for either of those diseases, the GI doctor would further be able to help me. And two, if I tested negative for either of those diseases, the GI doctor would be the place to go to look for further results. So basically, my first GI doctor appointment was in January, and this appointment was with Dr. Chloe, perfect name. So basically, I went to see Dr. Chloe and just had to repeat all of my symptoms from beginning to end once again. And let me tell you, Carly does not like Dr. Chloe at all. I kind of felt like she disregarded my feelings and symptoms a little bit. And an example of that is I had told her I was experiencing weight loss and she told me that wasn't true. And I was like, girl, my pediatrician just told me like a month ago that I was. So like, how are you about to tell me that I'm lying? So sometimes working with her was very frustrating, but she's a highly reviewed doctor and it wouldn't make sense for me to walk away from her just because I didn't like her that much, if you know what I'm saying. So to Dr. Chloe, I had kind of just gone through and explained all of my symptoms, which I realized I haven't explained to you guys yet. So let me do that really quickly. So some of the symptoms that I was experiencing were heartburn, acid reflex, severe abdominal pain, which literally would like 
make me unable to do everyday activities. Like that's how bad it is. I also dealt with very irregular bowel movements. Sorry if I'm telling too much information, but feel like it's necessary. I also experience bloating after eating and when my stomach bloats, my stomach is very hard. Like it's very weird to explain. There's also just very many random symptoms that I have experienced over time that would just take me forever to go through and explain everything to you. And the thing about my symptoms is they do occur every single day, but the severity of them are very irregular. Good example to explain what I'm talking about is like this week, I have obviously been dealing with stomach pain every day, but the week before that, I literally would wake up in the morning feeling like I was going to die. Just every morning when I woke up, I had a stabbing pain just like in my right side, occasionally my left, and it literally just felt like I was getting murdered. So that's what I mean by saying the severity was irregular. Basically implying that sometimes it was way worse and sometimes it was a little bit better, but obviously it was still there. So back to talking about my first doctor appointment with Dr. Chloe. So right off the start, she advised me to get a colonoscopy. Obviously, I don't want to do that. Like I'm 18 years old and I know a lot of people get it, but like going under and like doing all that was just something that I was extremely not interested in. So I had told Dr. Chloe like, I want to do every possible option that I can do before taking that route. And she did not like the answer to that. But I still made the decision that I wasn't doing a colonoscopy. So like two weeks later, I scheduled an ultrasound on my stomach, my gallbladder, and my pancreas everything came back normal. So after the ultrasound, a couple weeks went by, which marks us to yesterday. I also forgot to mention that during this, I was prescribed two different medicines, one by Dr. Chad and one by Dr. Chloe. The one by Dr. Chad was for stomach acid and the one by Dr. Chloe was for heartburn. And the medicine prescribed for heartburn is extremely important, so remember that point. So I went to the doctor yesterday and I had came in with a food journal, a list of like a whole bunch of things that I thought might have been important to tell her. And the entire time she basically didn't listen to me and just kept saying that I'm hard to work with because I won't let her do procedures on me. But I do understand coming from a doctor's perspective that instead of listening to someone's symptoms, it would be easier to do a procedure on someone. But when I'm telling you I don't want to do a procedure, it's like low key your job to like help me figure things out based on my symptoms, if that makes sense. So she asked me about the heartburn medication and I told her I didn't take it anymore because it gave me migraines. And she said I wasn't the only person who had told her that, so I didn't have to take it anymore. My mom is very aware that I don't want to get a colonoscopy done, so she kind of asked Dr. Chloe, like, if you were to do a colonoscopy, like, what exactly are you looking for? And she had named a couple things. She named Crohn's disease, endometriosis, another thing, which I don't even know what it was, but she had turned to my mom and she was like, because of her age, I absolutely know she doesn't have that. And then she left it at that. And immediately I was like, girl, I don't have any of those things. One, I already tested negative for Crohn's. Two, I don't have endometriosis because my pain and everything has nothing to do with my menstrual cycle at all. And three, the other thing you said you were looking for, you said you knew I didn't have. And then she basically told me she knows I have IBS, but getting a colonoscopy done would give reassurance to those results. But here's where I kind of got a little bit angry with her is I had told her very occasionally I get heartburn. And she was very heavily focusing on that, which I didn't really understand. The pain is like 99% with my stomach and 1% with my heartburn. So I don't really know why she prescribed me heartburn medication to begin with. But also at this point, she told me not only did I need a colonoscopy, I needed an endoscopy, which is, I think I said it right, but that's the camera that goes down your throat. And I was kind of like... I don't need that. Her pushing these tests onto me was just really confusing because she knew I really, really didn't want to get them done. And she had already diagnosed me with IBS. Basically, at the end of the appointment, she prescribed me this medicine. I think it's called Bentol. And if you look it up, it just basically like helps treat IBS symptoms. And that is important too. It treats IBS symptoms, not IBS in general, because IBS is an untreatable disease. Then after getting that information, I went home and did my own research and it was so eye-opening because I saw so many symptoms that I had and so many other people who had IBS as well. And finally, for the first time, everything just made so much sense. And that is why I'm very much at peace. Obviously, I'm not happy with what is wrong with me, but I'm at peace because it finally feels like a war after three years of like not knowing what's wrong. Like that door is finally closed. I finally know what's wrong and I can finally move on with my life. You know what I'm saying? So a few things that I saw that were actually eye-opening is the first TikTok that I clicked on about IBS was this girl talking about standing like this, like with her back hunched over is the only way she feels like comfortable. And that is how I feel every single day. I'm always like this. I'm literally sitting like that right now. 
know and I know it looks disgusting but it is the only way I can feel comfortable and like not feel super sick I also deal with anxiety. I don't know if I have ever talked about that online before. But after doing some research, I actually found that people who have IBS are more prone to having like mental health disorders like anxiety and depression. And after just going on TikTok and like looking up IBS and seeing so many people that are dealing with the same thing, obviously I feel terrible for them because I feel terrible for myself. Like this is a terrible thing that I have to live with forever now. But in a way it was comforting because for the first time I just like found a group of people that understands like exactly what I'm going through, you know? And it just sucks because along with having IBS, like I said, I'm lactose intolerant and I have a gluten intolerance. So it's just like at that point, I'm all the way at the bottom of the food chain and I'm the first to die in the zombie apocalypse. So I feel like now is a good point for me to kind of wrap up this video. There are so many more things that I could talk about, like I could talk about more symptoms, medications that I've tried, ways that I found that make me feel better. In general, there are just more things that I can talk about within like my experiences, like my experience going to the doctor, my experience living every Every single day with a disease that I don't know about. Obviously I'm just trying to summarize the story and keep it super short for you guys. I feel like during this video there was points where I was kind of like getting all over the place and even getting confused what I was saying just because there's so much information I have to say and I had to cram it all into this kind of short video. Basically I hope my story made sense and if you guys are interested in hearing me talk more about this I am very much willing to do that. I guess that kind of wraps this video. So thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. This kind of feels really weird to say on a video like this, but make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.